In the heart of the small town of Coatesville, Pennsylvania, the longest continuously operating steel company in the United States heats and rolls the huge specialty plate for which it is famous. Known for its strength and durability, Lucan steel can be found in structures as diverse as the Benjamin Franklin Bridge and the icebreaker Manhattan. In 1969, Lucan's produced the steel panels for the cathedral-shaped arches at the base of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. The success of this company can be traced back over 180 years to one person's determination. Why would a steel company have a woman's portrait hanging over a mantelpiece? Rebecca is the oldest child in a family where a boy isn't born um, until the fourth child. So in some ways, she takes the place of a son until there's a son comes along, and ultimately even despite the fact that a son comes along. Uh, she grew up learning about technological processes by watching them. And then she had the added benefit of having a father who talked to her about it and explained it to her. On March 25, 1813, at the Fallowfield Meeting House in Chester County, Pennsylvania, Dr. Charles Lukens and Rebecca Webb Pennock, taking each other by the hand, promised with divine assistance to be faithful and affectionate husband and wife until death should separate them. Rebecca Lukens was 19 years old. In short succession, Rebecca and Charles lost their infant son, Isaac, and Rebecca's beloved father. While still mourning these losses, their only remaining son, Charles, died also. During this period of grief, Rebecca learned that her father's will did not clearly pass ownership of Brandywine to her and Charles, as had been their clear understanding. And her mother, Martha, contested Rebecca's ownership of the mill. Meanwhile, Charles Lucan's reputation for producing quality iron had attracted the attention of John Elgar, an imaginative Quaker engineer. Elgar hoped to open up America's rocky eastern rivers to trade by building the first iron-hulled steamboat, the Cadorus, and he was looking for the strongest and lightest iron on the market. At the Brandywine Iron Works, Lukens was able to produce the thin iron sheets that Elgar needed for the construction of his steamship. But shortly after this plate was rolled and the order filled, tragedy struck again, changing forever the fate of the Lukens family and of the Brandywine Iron Works. In the summer of 1825, I lost my dear and excellent husband and then commenced my hard and weary struggle with life. Charles Lukens died suddenly of a fever in June of 1825. 31-year-old Rebecca was expecting their sixth child, and the business was still $15,000 in debt. Before he died, Charles had asked Rebecca for a promise, that she would continue to run the Brandywine Iron Works and carry out the plans they had made together. Dr. Lukens had just commenced the boilerplate business, and he was sanguine in his hopes for success. He wished me to continue, and I promised to comply. Mother said it would be folly for me to remain, though she thought as a female I was not fit to carry on such a concern. Rebecca took Charles' dying request seriously, and while struggling to keep her debtors at bay, she reassured customers that the Brandywine Ironworks would still fill their orders as promised. Charles's brother Solomon Lukens came to help Rebecca during this period and stayed on as her mill manager for many years. Dr. Lukens had many good and firm friends and they all stood by me. The workmen were tried and faithful. And so with some fear but more courage I began to struggle for a livelihood. Only five months after Charles's death Elgar's iron-hulled steamship, the Cadorus, was launched on the Susquehanna River to huge fanfare and front-page news. Its success established Lukens' reputation, 
as a company that could produce top quality specialty plate. It would be really interesting to know what sorts of tensions existed within Rebecca herself over how she resolved that dilemma of, be, of living in a world where she had to spend all of her time paying attention to the details of this manufacturing business and yet also living in a time which said to her what women are supposed to do is take care of children, take care of the home. My sense is that she did that by saying, in effect, I am taking care of the children by running the manufacturing business. In 1832, Rebecca lost her 15-year-old daughter, Elizabeth. Devastated again by grief, Rebecca threw herself into completely overhauling the mill. I have thoroughly repaired the mansion house, built good and substantial tenant houses for my workmen, and put much lime and fencing on the farm. The mill has been rebuilt from the very foundation. The dam entirely rebuilt, wheels put in, castings, furnaces, mill head, mill house. Not a single vestige of the old remains. She takes this operation, turns the, the operation around, actually starts making a profit only to run into the chaos, the panic of 1837. All is paralyzed, business at a standstill. I have as yet lost nothing, but am in constant fear. I have stopped rolling for a few weeks and set my men to repairing the race dam. She went through a period, an economic downturn, which was a very important challenge that all of the American entrepreneurs faced in the Industrial Revolution. Her caution in selling to people who weren't trustworthy saved her, but so did her willingness to spend some money during downtime to keep the skilled workmen around. Because long term, then they were grateful and were more likely to stick around. So she made work on her farm. One of the things you could see in the way Rebecca Lukens handled her business affairs is that she saw a kind of that of God in all the people who worked around her and saw her work as part of, of a larger vision of using the resources of the world well. And among the resources of the world were her workers. When it became difficult to maintain them, she figured out ways to maintain them and figured out ways to continue a, a relationship of respect between herself and her workers. Between 1832 and uh, 1850, anywhere between 30 and 60 percent of the ironworks uh, either failed or simply went out of business. They went bankrupt. Uh, that wasn't true of Rebecca Lucan's operation. Maybe it's her religious values and her values as a human being uh, and her experience with hard personal times that is responsible for this, but her workers stay loyal. Her creditors stay loyal, and more than that, they have confidence in her. Through all this, she manages not only to keep her head above water, but uh, to make real headway against, uh, against a, a set of odds that uh, sank a lot of people. One of the dreams that has grown out of the community in Coatesville is to preserve the Lucan's Historic District, the historic houses of the Lucan's and Houston families, and various related mill properties, and combine them into a historic area that focuses on iron and steel heritage in Western Chester County. And everything that the company started with is still here in one form or another. It all can be brought back to life. <laughs>